so to kick things off for this swim cover up, what you need is a button front pattern of any kind. It genuinely does not matter. If you want, if you have a bunch to choose from and you want to find the most perfect one, I would find one that's a little bit oversized because, you know, we do want this to be kind of like a roomy um, situation, nothing close fitting. If you don't have that, then just size up one or two sizes on yours to get a really oversized look. Then you want to go ahead and cut that out of your lightweight fabric and you're going to cut it out all in one piece. Sew together your shoulders. And then I'm gonna be using my Ditto form today. So Ditto form is literally an exact replica of my body. I went in and did like a 3D scan on this really cool, like, I don't know, I guess 3D body scan machine. <laughs> and um, then they kind of 3D printed, and this is my exact body. So I am able to determine just exactly where I want all of the trimming to go. Because the trimming is see-through, you know, you kind of really don't want it over the apex of your bust. You might not want it at your belly button. You certainly don't want it like at your crotch line. So it's really helpful to have either a ditto form like this with all of these style lines um, or a second set of hands so that you can help you kind of place it push comes to shove, just put it on your body and pin the trimming on that way. So I've cut a few strips of this. I'm, I only got enough of the trimming to do the front and then the full hem. This trim can be a little bit expensive. I have the, it's this here, and you can see that it was $7.99 a yard. So it's $8 a yard and I think I got five yards. Of course I used a coupon, but still it gets pretty pricey. So I didn't think it would matter too, too much if the back wasn't done, um, if the back was just completely solid. So that's what I'm rocking with. Um, but okay, so we have a little strip of this and we are gonna want to figure out where to place this on our uh, garment. So I need to make sure that my center front is truly at the center front and that is where this little notch is. And I'll bring her in so you guys can see. And again, this is what makes the Ditto form so great is that they have all these little ribbons here that tell you the exact center front of your body, your bust apex, your under bust, waist, and hip as well. So it's really, really nice to have all these little horizontal situations to help you whenever you're placing any kind of trimming like this, whenever you're doing buttons, um, any of that kind of stuff, this really, really helps. Okay. So we've got this in place and I'm only gonna do one side and then mirror that on my cutting table on the other side. So I know that I, I want um, a piece of this kind of at the chest level. I want something sort of at the waist level and then another one at the hip level. But again, I don't wanna, you know, like if you put it over here, then it becomes like kind of like boob tassels and we don't really want that. So I need to make sure that I get it up high enough through here and then, again, not even really worrying about it being super um, straight. I'm gonna do all of that flat on my cutting table. I just wanna get it kind of eyeballed in there so that I know where it wants to go. And then I can take another piece here. Okay, so on this, on the waist seam, I wanna make sure again that I don't think it's very flattering to see your belly button. Um, at the exact waistline would be really nice because, you know, that would draw attention to the smallest part of your body, even though this is a roomier garment. So, again, place your garment along the center front. I have this kind of like button placket thing that's happening. So, we've got ours like this, and you can even like, the um, you can pin into the ditto form because they're completely foam. So, you can totally pin into them and hold things in place. There's no plastic in there whatsoever. So that's really nice. Let's get another one. Just keep it going down here. Okay, so if we're gonna place this at our waist seam, like so, do we wanna split the difference? Do we want it to be right at the waist seam? Do we want the tassels to be at the waist seam? I think I'm gonna go right at the waist. Something like this. So again, put some pins in. I will transfer these, you know, out of the foam here shortly, but you just want to make sure that you get it 
along the center front exactly where you want it to go. And then we'll do the hip. Oh gosh, you can really see the state of my sewing room at this point. Okay, and then we're gonna place this again. We don't want we don't want the see-through part to be like right at our crotch level. I don't think that would be very attractive, like at all. Um, and we do have trim that's going in at the bottom. So maybe, maybe we just do is just three. Right? Oh, can you see? Yeah. That way we have bust, waist, and then we have it at the hem as well. And then if I did that, then I would have enough to put some through the sleeve as well, which would be a nice carryover from this situation. So see, it really does help to put it on a dress form because if I were doing this flat on my table, I would have had one, two, three, four levels of this trim. And I really think that I only need three. Um, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one, two, three, just like so and then also gonna get it into my sleeve using the notches on the pattern as a guide for you know, where it should go. Same, same concept as if you were matching stripes. So let me get this off the dress form onto the table. I'll get you guys an overhead shot so you can see how, how we're gonna get this onto the garment and then you know, work the trim from there. All right, so I have my garment off the ditto form laying flat um, just that one side for, or that one front panel um, and we know a few things our grain line is parallel to the center front here and our center front is roughly one and a half inches so if you wanted to go ahead and press this in place just to make sure it was nice and even throughout good finger press probably just fine too okay so if we know that our um, center front is parallel to the grain line, then we know what is horizontally straight. So that is what we are gonna use. I uh, probably need a bigger ruler than this. That is what we are gonna use to determine um, where the trimming goes. And you can see I pretty much had it spot on here. You just wanna pull it down a little bit. And there we go. Now we know that that one is in place. So we can grab our pins and pin this in place and trim away any excess. I'm going to leave, I don't know, probably an inch or so just to make sure that I have enough room. But you get an idea of where the trimming goes from here. All right. Um, trim. So we can put this in and then I'll leave like an inch or so. And then I can use this for the other side. All right, and for the waist one, um, obviously this little self facing is gonna be turned inward. So we can't just have our trim hanging off the edge like I had it before. So we wanna just scoot it ever so slightly to the edge, put a pin in, and then do the same um, little system where we line up our ruler with the uh, edge of the center front and then just lay this in nice and gently so that it's straight. To get this sewn on, we're gonna go to our machine and we're gonna stitch along the top of the trim, obviously, and then we're also gonna stitch along this edge. Now your trim might not have the tassels, which is fine. You're just gonna um, stitch along both edges, leaving the fabric underneath completely intact. And then I'll show you how we're gonna get it to be see-through after Okay, I've got this completely sewn down as you can see. And I thought I would go ahead and show you how to match up left to right. So just get it laid back down on top of this through the waist like so. Then you can slide in your trim like so, and then pin it. All right, and then you can turn it right side out and now you have them perfectly matched up. Repin, stitch, repeat. All right, it is so cute already. You could just leave it like this and it would be adorable, but we're not. We are gonna take advantage of this crochet trim. And this is a moment in the tutorial where I need to tell you guys, don't be afraid, just be careful, okay? 
we are going to be cutting our fabric. I know, I know it's scary, but you can do it. Um, we're gonna be cutting through these channels, right? All through here, right down the middle of all four channels. Now I'm gonna try and run these um, edges through my serger, press back and top stitch. That's gonna be the um, order that I am going to do all this in. So let me get a couple more done, or I guess I'll just get them all done and then I'll show you what it looks like afterward. All right, I got all my trim in. Isn't it the coolest little hack ever? Um, I love that you can see through. I love that it is at like a good proportion to my body and it's not weird over my um, bust or anything. And my waist seam one is right at my waist seam, just where I wanted it. And then of course we'll have some hanging off here at the end. But from here, you really just sew the garment based on the pattern's instructions. You just, you know, now this is all treated as just like your original cut of fabric. And you have a super cute detail. So of course I'll finish this up and show you guys what she looks like in the end.